here we are. Um, this is the uh, this is the Johnson family, and we're uh, we're glad you're uh, tuning in. We're uh, we'll check the uh, Facebook uh, comments here in a minute. I'm gonna share this link on my personal page so uh, a few more folks will be able to see it too. But um, <clears throat> we've got uh, Mary and Molly and myself, uh, Josh Johnson, um, Betty McDaniel with the um, with the uh, preserving our Southern American music and uh, the Young Girls Appalachian. Young Appalachian Musician Program. They um, they asked if we would uh, do a Friday night uh, live stream uh, video, and we don't normally play together quite a bit. We uh, usually have uh, our own uh, groups of folks that we play with, um, but we've heard each other practicing quite a bit over the years, and so um, uh, we've just sort of thrown some things together here, and we're treating this less like a performance and more like just a little bit of a uh, prepared jam session in our living room, so uh, I hope you'll uh, appreciate uh, that aspect of it. Um, and so uh, you see me playing guitar here, and I don't normally play the guitar, but uh, I sort of got stuck on that uh, for this evening. So uh, what, are, what are we going to do next here, Mary? You want to do one of the D tunes? One of the songs, a singing one, or another fiddle tune? Mm -hmm. Let's do another fiddle tune. Okay. What we got in D? Let's save that for a little while. Alright. Uh, well then let's do one of the just things. A bit. Okay. Um, do you want to do farther along? Yep, that sounds good. Cool. This is one that uh, that me and Mary, we've, we've played for years and years and sung together. And uh, she is, she's, she's sort of started singing with, uh, with this song. This comes from the uh, 1939 Stamps and Baxter Hymnal uh, Church that we used to go to years ago, Saluda Hill Baptist Church. One of the prettiest views here in the upstate, and um, they uh, they had a slew of these, and every Sunday evening we get uh, we get them out, and uh, this is this is one from that particular era, and um, what's that? Let's play now. Okay, let's go. Let's do. Uh, Oh, 
Luna. All right, we've got Luna here. So if you would um, uh, comment on the video and just let, you, let us know where you're uh, where you're watching from, and uh, I'm going to bring it up here so I can try to see some of these comments and. Um, All right, we've got, we've got folks from all over the place. Missouri, Greenwood, South Carolina, the great state of Pumpkintown, South Carolina. The great state of Yeah, why not? <laughs> okay. Do you want to do, um, you want to do Hangman's Reel? Um, yeah. This is, this is a fiddle tune. It's actually a Canadian fiddle tune, uh, Gene Kerrigan. He, um. He sort of made it made it popular, and uh, the old time uh, the old time uh, crowd they picked it up, and uh, it's been a, a great uh, tune for uh, as a reel as a breakdown. And uh, Brian Sutton he brought it over to the bluegrass world, and uh, so that's how it sort of moved. That's sort of its transition, and Molly's going to. Uh, Played on banjo, and I can't play the Jean Kerrigan style, and Mary can't either. So we're just going to let Molly take it from here. Probably a couple times through, maybe. we do now you want to do uh, do like a waltz or something yep all right we'll go to G oh, this uh this waltz here that I'm gonna do is it's called the Hammonds Grove waltz and it is <clears throat> it is from South Carolina but um, there's a fiddler in the in the Columbia area uh, by the name of Ashley Carter and uh, 
he over the over the years over the decades has collected um, some some audio recordings of various uh, South Carolina fiddlers from the you know the 70s and 80s I, I don't know how far back really but he's got a you know a vast collection and he posts them periodically and uh, you know and shares them and and uh, this one ended up on Facebook and I I liked it and I've I've got a thing for for learning some uh, for learning South Carolina tunes, and this is one of them. We, we probably got maybe two or three that I'll do t tonight that are South Carolina tunes. Um, but this one's uh, Hammett's Grove Waltz. Hammett's Grove is, I think, is kind of over near Packlet, South Carolina, um, sort of in the Spartanburg area. And uh, the fiddler, I think, who wrote it, the, who they got it from, um, I heard uh, he, he's got a recording of uh, Vernon Riddle. Uh, you'll hear me play another one from Vernon Riddle. He was a he was another uh, popular fiddler here in the upstate of South Carolina. And um, but the fiddler he got it from his name was get this Chris Stapleton. <laughs> and uh, but it's not the same Chris Stapleton. So. Anyway, here is uh, Hammett's Grove Waltz. Good job, Molly. She found that uh, she uh, likes to play waltzes on guitar, so that's really good. Hard it works works well because she hates to play them on on the on the banjo. <clears throat> yeah. Keep that. Let's do. Um, we talked about. Let's do another fiddle tune here, real quick. Let's do that rhubarb. All right. Vernon Riddle um, was a fiddler I mentioned a little bit ago, and. Uh, he spent a lot of time over here in the in the Pickens County area over at Haygood Mill, and he was um, very active over there. It was you know very sort of a it's it's a bastion of uh, traditional arts, traditional music uh, here in Pickens County and here in the upstate and the, in the state really. And uh, but Vernon Riddle, he's from Spartanburg, and he went down to Texas in the fifties. And so he spent his army career um, learning how to play fiddle from uh, from a few Texas fiddlers. And uh, this is a tune that 
that is reported that he got from Eck Robertson. No, um, we've we've not. Uh, Somebody asked a question. We've not seen um, any kind of recordings of this particular tune um, uh, that Eck Robertson did, but it's said it came from Eck Robertson. Uh, but. I got it from Vernon Riddle, uh, recordings of Vernon Riddle, so... We got a question in the comments. What was that tune that Molly played? It was Hangman's Reel. Hangman, one word, Hangman's Reel. Yep, it's a great tune. So this is rhubarb? This is rhubarb. Let's try not to get too blazing fast with it. Me too. You just play it. Got any questions? I can't. I'm not, I'm not seeing all the questions here that pop up really easily. So if you've got any questions, um, I might try to see if I can get it. Uh, let us know. My parents are here with us, and um, today is my mom's birthday. So everybody, wish her birthday comments <laughs> in there, and let her know that you're you're watching her son <laughs> and grandchildren. <laughs> I'm going to try to bring this up here. Let's do Bury Me Beneath the Willow. Bury Me Beneath the Willow. Yep. One second. I'm gonna try to get this here. Oh my. But this thing will just work. Oh, I hear the dog. I think the dog's crying. I think well, yeah, I never saw her play guitar before. That was a surprise. <laughs> Thank you. 
we do a claw hammer tune there, Molly? Which one? Uh, well, let's start out with uh, Blackberry Blossom where we swap, swap back and forth. Yeah, we did that in there, though, right? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. We did it in earlier. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Not that fast. So, oh, we'll slow it down. to uh, demonstrate uh, some differences. We're just going to kind of compare and contrast a th uh, three finger uh, scrub style uh, banjo with uh, the claw hammer style. Um, uh, whatever it is that you do. And uh, I'm going to play the, the lowly old claw hammer style and she's going to fancy it up. And, uh, special fall apart ending. Um, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, well what do we got here? Um, you guys want to do... Uh, There's uh, one other request. Temporary material. Okay. Oh, yeah, I kind of know that one. Yeah, 30 is 30. Yep, 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 yep. We need to pull it together and get going. Stop talking about history of songs. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> the people gotta know. I don't even remember, and I've heard it like seven times. Alright, uh, you guys wanna do Miller's Reel? Sure. Yeah, let's do that one. Hope I don't mess it up too bad. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> 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 
step up a picture here for you get out of the way to check the camera. Alright. You ready? Yeah. Oh, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> Hi, cute cat. <laughs> you gonna be loud? tell you about the history of that one. You don't know. Uh, I haven't looked into it. <laughs> but that, that comes from a uh, Texas shorty. And, um, was he shorty? No, I don't believe so. Oh. Texas shorty and John Hartford um, is probably our favorite album in this house. Yes. And the girls have listened to it since they were just since they were very young. They've always heard that record. And uh, so that is uh, one of the uh, one of the soundtracks of their lives. So um, let's sing another. Let's sing another. Ragged Enough Bill tunes. Where'd my pick go? Here it is. What? Ragged Bill is the soundtrack of our. Ragged Bill. We weren't allowed to. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, Hamilton Iron Works from John Harper. If you haven't heard it, look it up. It's it's a lot of fun. It's, it is a record to be listened to. Bell, it's a flower that's uh, native to this particular area, and um, I don't think it's found anywhere else. And that's a Gillian Welch song, and she heard of the flower, and she named it the, uh, the, the tune. She wrote the song after it, and she horribly misspelled the name of it. But uh, she, and she didn't know any better, but that's all right. It's a Why great song. Gillian Welch, let's do the other one. By the Mark? By the Mark. Okay. okay. 
See, we'll get any more singing songs um, other than say 43. Oh, we should do um, 20 last time. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, we have, but we should let's do um, Old Horse and Buggy. Do yes, play a three finger. Yeah. This is an Arch Stamper tune. Arch Stamper was a fiddler out of Kentucky. He was the son of Hazard, or Hazard. He was the son of Hiram Stamper. I think they were from, might have been from Hazard, Kentucky. Hiram Stamper was his dad. But he played with uh, Ralph Stanley and Larry Sparks. And, but he had a he had a huge repertoire of the old fiddle tunes. And this is this is one of the old ones, um, Old Horse and Buggy. And it has traveled a lot. It's by, been played a lot of, by a lot of people. It's a good tune. And uh, I just love Art Stamper's fiddling. He plays like the old guys played. And. Uh Alright, so this is um, Old Horse and Buggy or Old Horse and Buggy O. See, um, there's uh, Fred Stone King out of uh, Missouri. He um, he played this one on one of his one of his albums. I wore it out, and he called it "Old Horse and Buggy." So.
that's a good tune. It just drives. And uh, fiddle tunes go real well with uh, with the three finger banjo. Goes great with um, with claw hammer too. I'll never complain about that at all. Uh, but Molly does a fine job backing these up, probably because she's listened to the uh, Texas Shorty and John Hartford album a zillion <laughs> times. She knows how it's done. So that was, uh, that was Arch Stamper, and um, one of the things about, as a musician, is that you are pretty much a mashup of your favorite musicians, and you listen to a guy, and you like a tune he does, or you like a little lick that he does, so you listen to that, and you find some tunes that he likes, and then you pick one of those tunes, and then you go listen to another fiddle player playing the same tune, because you want to kind of hear how, how the variations have done. And uh, so you, you kind of work your way through all these different fiddlers. So Art Stamper is one of mine, uh, one of my favorites. Um, I don't know if we've, we've mentioned any others. Let's play one more. Uh, we'll do, uh, I want to do Cotton Eye Joe. This is one I've learned recently. We'll, one yeah. more fiddle tune. Oh, one more fiddle tune. <laughs> yeah, we'll do one more fiddle tune here. Uh, Cotton Eye Joe. And I've, I've never played this one because it's just been played to death. And, um, but I heard uh, one of my uh, fiddle, uh, fiddle heroes, um, Missouri fiddle player out of uh, uh, Central Missouri there, Lonnie Robertson, and uh, I heard him play it. It was a, a three fiddle tune set on a 45, uploaded to YouTube, of course, and uh, um, I said, well, I've, I've got a reason to learn Cotton Eye Joe now, so let's see if I can do it. One, two, I kicked that one off a little fast, didn't I? Yeah. Sorry. Mary just learned that one this afternoon. <laughs> and uh, so she, it, it took me weeks. And she learned it this afternoon, but then I just played it too fast. So um, these kids just tear me up because I'll spend forever on these tunes and they'll just come and play it right with me. And, uh, well, that's because they can hear you playing at 10 o'clock at night. And it's just like, it's ingrained in your brain. What's so what you want uh, can we do the singing ones? Neglect don't neglect the rose. Alright. Um heard Larry Sparks do this one and he does a magnificent job with it. Uh, another singer that I would put on the list of, of uh, singers that you need to check out is uh, Jenny Hawker. Uh, that's J I N N Y and uh, she G I N N Y. Yeah, she's married to um, uh, Tracy Swartz. Schwartz, he uh, he played with the New Lost City Ramblers, and the stuff they do is just just old and good. And good. And uh, this is uh, "Don't Neglect the Rose." Where's, where's the words? I don't think I need it, but I'm gonna have it just in case. All right. Hey man, you that's, kick my, it that's me. Oh, you kick it off. <laughs>
for old Joe Clark. Three requests for, requests for old Joe Clark. All right, let's, let's do Let's go old, overtime. Yep. Um, old Joe Clark. Let's do old Joe Clark real quick. Like, You're an A? A-ish? I'm an A. Definitely an A. Yeah. 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 G, I want to do one more uh, South Carolina tune, and then we'll. Um, we oh, we we'll, were down in the Philippines. We got one more South Carolina tune, and then we'll wrap it up with a song. Special request for my girls for me to sing this one. Um, I, I didn't get to do the, the song enough to do. Which one? The one on my list. Oh, Landfind Time. Okay, we'll do that one and then our, the, the, the last one. Wait, does that mean me? We're going to G right now. So we're going to do uh, Pruitt's Reel. This is uh, Jimmy Pruitt. He was a fiddler here in the upstate, and he played with with all the greats. He played with uh, Don Reno and them. And, and, uh, but uh, he passed away uh, earlier this year, and uh, he put out an album in uh, 1994. And uh, I'd heard about the album for a really long time, and I, I finally got a copy of it. And it turns out... Uh, 
the uh, the guest musicians on the record um, are all people that I play with pretty regularly around here, so that was kind of neat to see. But this is one that's that's on it. It's called uh, Prove It's Real. One note is that he was uh, he was good friends with the uh, fiddler uh, with Vernon Riddle. Vernon Riddle's got a tune by the name of Hoss and Hoss. If you can listen to them side by side, they're very similar. <laughs> but this one's pretty pretty it's real. <laughs> Thank you. 
just blew that tender line all to pieces. And uh, all right, so is that it? Is that it? What? Let's see. You gotta hear some background on this. I heard this tune, this song, a few years ago. You and heard it. You didn't write it. I did not write it. This was written in 1947. We are living in some weird times now. But we've always lived in weird times. Because listen to this song from 1947. And it'll just show you how worked up we get about things. But this one is, uh, I guess you can qualify it as a gospel song. I would call it a, no. a, a, no. a, a non-sacred gospel number. Or a popular gospel, is, there's that category. It's called, You Got to Pray to the Lord When You See Those Flying Saucers. Yeah, you started. You better pray to the Lord when you see the flying saucers. It may be the coming of Judgment Day. There's a sign in the doubt of the trouble that's about. I say, my friend, you better start praying. They're a terrifying sight as they fly on day and night. They're warning that we better mend our ways. You better pray to the Lord when you see this mind so It may be the coming of judgment day. Say these saucers might be someone's movie stream, or maybe they let down done from Mars. If you have just stopped and think, you'll realize what it means. They're more than the bombs are falling stars. Or you see the saucers flying like a comet through the sky. You should realize the price you have to pay. You better pray to the Lord when you see the flying saucers. And those flying saucers might be just a sign And if peace doesn't come, all will be the end of something So repent today, you're running out of time When you see those saucers flying like a comet through the sky You should realize the price you'll have to pay You better pray to the Lord when you see those flying saucers It may be the coming of judgment day Thank you everybody for tuning in. We we had fun. We uh, had a real good time uh, pulling all this stuff together and uh, trying to figure out how to make it work. And we're used to uh, getting to see you guys face to face. Some of them we don't. Some of you guys we don't get to see face to face too often. And uh, we're glad you joined in with us. But um, um, we're looking back, to, looking forward to getting back to playing out in public again and getting within six feet of you guys, having a cup of coffee and chatting. So. Uh, for now, till next, uh, don't forget to tune in tomorrow night. There'll be another session. Who's playing tomorrow night? No idea. No idea. <laughs> there is somebody playing tomorrow night about 7 or 8 o'clock. So be watching the Yam Facebook page and, uh, and tune in. And I know it'll be a lot of fun. What's that? Look out for flying saucers. And look out for flying saucers and flying viruses. <laughs> They're everywhere. <laughs> so good night, y'all. We'll see you later. <laughs>